Baptisms are here, family. Join us for a mass water baptism on the 3rd of March. Remember to bring a towel and dry clothes to change it after you get baptized. Also, please make sure to bring the appropriate dress code with dark clothes that are non see through. For more information, please visit crcchurch.com. Every hand counts in spreading God's love in our communities and changing lives. Join our Beauty for Ashes campaign as we aim to put together over 10,000 CRC care crates to support victims of gender-based violence. We will be packing the CRC case crates on the 4th and 5th of March. Contact your zone pastor for more information. Join hands with us to pack hope, kindness, and God's love. many events and so much information to share, it could get difficult to keep up. The good news is that you can stay up to date with all things CRC by visiting our website. From information about service times to amazing sermons by Pastor Ad, you can get it all in one place. For more information, visit our website at crcchurch.com. CRC family, I wanted to take the time to give some feedback of what has been happening right here in Gaborone. Well, as you all know, Pastor Art came to Botswana, to Gaborone on the 1st of November, and we opened this beautiful 3,000 seater facility. And again, we want to give God all the glory and all the honor He deserves. Pastor Art always taught us, if you will make room for God, God will fill it. If you will dig the ditches, God will send the rain. And it has been exactly that. 2024, what an amazing start to the year it's been. We have seen record attendances. We have seen full altars. We have seen people join ministries, home sales. It has just been explosive. It is the year of overflow. And we are so excited to see what God is going to do. But we know that Pastor Ad has a powerful word for us today. I cannot wait for that message. But for now, we hand over to the band for praise and worship. Let's go. Good morning, CRC, the King of 
kings is in this place this morning. If you love it, put your hands together. Mm. I wish I could tell you, wish I could describe it, but I can contain it, can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to paint the whole picture. Higher, give your praises to the King. 
can feel your spirit stirring. I've been praying, you've been working, working it all for good. So fan the flame and keep it burning. You're refining in the burning. Oh, the waiting will be worth it. Cause you're working it.
Come on, you are prophesying to your own future right now. Come on, put that word in your mouth. A miracle. Come on, you've got to believe. Put a smile on your face. Come on, this is a resurrection Sunday. Our God is not dead. He's alive. The grave is empty. Come on. I say Jesus is alive this morning. That means he is here wherever you are. And he is filled with goodness and mercy and grace and power. There is nothing he cannot do. So I don't know what you are facing. But I want to tell you on television, standing here today in all our churches, you are not hopeless, you are not helpless, because you have a God who cares about you, and a God who will make a way where there seems to be no way. In the name of Jesus Christ, say amen. Come on, lift up your energy, lift up your shout, lift up your voice, and give the Lord a praise today. Amen. Come on, give somebody a high five and say, miracle after miracle. God is a God of miracles. I want to welcome you all to uh, this morning, TBN, TBN, yet to One Gospel, Praise TV, come on, let's welcome them, Faith TV, YouTube, CLC Online, Correctional Facilities, people all over Russia, I believe I was blocked in Russia last week, thank God we open again, um, let me not say anything about, the people who control all these social media platforms, please, I saw preachers this last week talk all over the world and say, churches are being shut off live stream and uh, uh, preachers are being shut off, come on. Come on, I, I say to those people that control social media, stop doing the devil's work. I might even now be kicked off because of that. But it doesn't matter. We'll find another platform and we will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And no devil in this world will control or stop or control the airwaves in Jesus' name. Russia, we love you from Africa with love. Amen. Israel, America, Europe, uh, in Iran, India, Pakistan, China, all over Africa. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, glimlach, like, gelukkig, weer like of jy blij is, jy is in die kerk. Amen, ek weet van julle is op tijd, maar dan moet jy jou kind een miljoen mijl gaan aflaai by die kinderkerk. En uh, dis ok, jy is hier vanochtend. And God is here, and God's got something great in store for all of us this morning. Take your seats in heavenly places, please. Unbuckle your seat belts and uh, get ready to be inspired in Jesus' name. My message this morning, simply dead things can come alive. If there's something dead in your life, it's going to come alive. You need to say amen. I think most people have something dead. It might be a dead um, dog, and by that I don't mean your husband. Um, You know, my, we, that's a terrible, where does this thought come from? In any case, because my kids believe in the power of God, okay? So we had this beautiful bull terrier puppy, fell in the swimming pool, buzz, and uh, uh, I come home, and then they have the dog, the dog, uh, Vanny, the dog obviously went to heaven, because I believe dogs go to heaven, and there they were with a hairdryer, and they were trying to revive the dog and resuscitate the dog, and that CPR on the dog, and the dog stayed dead, and everybody said, oh, what a good introduction to talk about the power of God, and the resurrection power of God, amen, just trying to get my sound man to get this thing right, Romans 4 verse 7 in the Bible says, as it is written, I have made you a father, a promise of many nations, in the presence of him who we believe, God who gives life to the dead, 
and who calls things that do not exist as though they were. God specializes in causing dead things to live again. I don't know whether it's a dead business, a dead emotion, a dead body, a dead relationship, but I want to tell you this morning, our God is a God who gives life to the dead things. In the name of Jesus, shout amen. Come on, again. John chapter 11 verse 1, In a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. Anybody wants to wipe the pastor's hair, uh, feet with your, her hair this morning? I'm just trying to get you all to relax, okay? Just imagine that. That's not the only woman who washed Jesus' feet with her tears and anointed him and, and, and wiped his hair. Now, I'm not Jesus. I'm just telling you, be glad that you're not, uh, your pastor's not Jesus. Because that beautiful hairdo of yours that you spent uh, 3,000 rand on yesterday might not leave you this morning so beautiful. Okay, whatever. So her brother Lazarus is sick. Verse 3, then, therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. I want you to look at the person next to you and say to that person, Jesus really loves you. Everybody has to hear that. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say the person on the other side, Jesus really loves you. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Then drop down to verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that what, even now I know that whatever you ask God, he will give you. You better underline that because that's it. Lazarus has been dead for four days. And she's actually saying, Lord, if you were here, it would not have happened. What is she saying? Later on, we see she says he's been dead for four days. She says this is, there's no hope in the natural. But she says, even now, I know that when you ask God something, He will hear your prayer. And I want to say this morning, no matter how bad, how long the delay, how many times you've been prayed for, there's one more prayer that you can pray. There's one more offering of praise that you can give God. I'll tell you that God still answers your prayer and that God is still a miracle worker. Can you say amen in Jesus' name? Jesus said to your brother will rise again. And Martha theologically said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live again. Then verse 38, then Jesus again groaning in himself. He's praying. That word groaning means he snorted angrily like a horse against the powers of darkness that was keeping Lazarus in the grave. So he came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. So he said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him, was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, did I not say to you that if you would believe, listen, some of you have to get rid of your cynicism. Some of you have to get rid of your skepticism. Some of you have to get rid of your negativity and you have to refuel your faith. You have to make a decision again today. I, I know things are stinking. I know you're in a bad situation. I know Lazarus is in the grave. I know there's a stone uh, in front of the grave. I know that you are facing hard areas in your life, but I'll tell you something. Jesus says to Martha and he says to you this morning, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? I tell you this morning, he says to you, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see your parents get saved. You will see that son come back from rebellion. You will see your breakthrough in business. You will see your health restored because he is a miracle worker. He is a way maker. Come on. We are not going to lose our expectation because we're sitting at a grave. 
This morning we are sitting not at a grave of hopelessness, but we are sitting at a grave of resurrection. That tomb is empty. Your Savior is alive and His resurrection power is available. If you believe it today, there in Blumen and North Pretoria, somebody, just somebody, jump to your feet and shout hallelujah in Jesus' name. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes, listen now, and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I know you always hear me. Can you say amen to that? I know you always hear me. But because of the people, the unbelievers, who are standing by, I said, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to come out. Something is going to come out this morning. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, let him go or loose him and let him go. Dead things can come back to life. I believe this year of overflow God wants dead things to live again Aaron's rod can bud again those things that are stale those things that have a stench can be anointed by the Holy Ghost and they can have a fresh fragrance again because God said I will give you beauty for ashes God says I will resurrect even the ashes with something beautiful come on this is a word for somebody I'm telling you that barren things are going to produce. I've heard how many ladies in our church that say, Pastor, I had a miscarriage. Pastor, I lost a child. But now he has the new baby. God is restored. I have a child. God has blessed me. I've seen God's miracle. That's why I like that song with my daughter Chanel, that little baby that she has, where there was no hope initially. We are seeing miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. This is a journey of faith. God is not about to abandon you. Don't you abandon your faith and your hope and your belief in God. You keep on believing as Jesus said. Martha, I told you, if you can believe, you will see the glory of God. And I'll tell you today, this is not unto death. What you are facing will not be your end. What seems to be a dead end may be a new beginning for you. He will resurrect you. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. Because He still is a way maker, a miracle worker a promise keeper and he said the things that are impossible with men are possible with God for with God all things are possible hallelujah he's the God of a turnaround he's the God of a new beginning he's a God who is alive you better say amen and give him a praise like you believe God is alive I believe broken things are going to be fixed I believe lost things are going to be found lost sheep lost coins lost opportunities empty vessels are going to be filled with overflow sick bodies are going to experience god's sustaining grace god's deliverance and god's healing power our god is a healer he is jehovah rapha i don't care what you face i don't care what you i mean i do, do care but we don't base our faith on a negative experience we build our faith upon the Word of God. and We all have some defeats, but thank God we have more victories. Can you say amen? And we hold on to the ultimate victory that we have in Christ Jesus. I don't want to listen to people always who tell me when I preach about faith, tell me about auntie so-and-so who believed God and she died. Hebrews chapter 11 says, there are many people who die in faith. At least they died in faith. They saw the promises. They believed the promises. And in this life, they never received the promise. But they died in faith. They did not die hopeless. They did not die in despair. Maybe everything doesn't turn out the way you think it should. But God will have the final say. And this is what Martha says. And I think we are like this sometimes as well. We say, but God could have prevented this. Sure you could have. Why did He not? I don't know. But I know this. What God said to Martha I'm telling you, Martha, you need to believe. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm telling you, Martha, I have told you, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. I tell you this morning what was meant to harm you. I tell you this morning what was meant to kill you. I tell you this morning what was meant to derail you. 
God is going to turn around for your good and God is going to bless you and God is going to cause overflow to come and I prophesy whether you receive it or not miracle after miracle I tell Chanel every day miracle after miracle it may be a little miracle but it's a miracle celebrate the miracles of God celebrate the goodness of God celebrate the little cloud that you see in your life stop talking about the negatives and the problems and voice your cynicism and just begin to believe that God is able that Jesus still has the power he still is the same yesterday today and forever can somebody say amen today So she says to Jesus, when Jesus says, roll away the stench, we have this conversation with God sometimes as well. I spoke about the inner outer conversation last week, and we think, well, it's been four years now. COVID really damaged my business. I get it. Four years. But he's, yeah. He's going to roll away the stone. He, you're going to roll away the stone. And he's going to talk to your Lazarus. He's going to bring life to your Lazarus. He's going to cause breath to enter the body of Lazarus. I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, it's not over until you decide it's over. God has a miracle for you. I know this is what the Holy Ghost wants me to tell you. Because some of you think I don't believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. We have to celebrate everything God does. We have to celebrate the little things God does. Yes, it's miraculous. There are people going under this morning and you are still, okay, you may not be running, but your boat is still afloat. That means God is not done with you. Say amen. Oh, come on in Jesus' name. So I don't care how hopeless your situation, how impossible, how dead, how long the delay. If you can believe, all things are possible. And I believe what you are going through is not unto death. But will, for some of you, be a new beginning. For others, it will be a new resurrection. For others, it's going to be a new road. I said to one of our pastors, because uh, uh, certain things happen, and he's gone through a very traumatic time. They lost the building they were in. And uh, I said to him, uh, this is not, uh, it's the devil. And I don't care what people say, but God's going to turn things around. Today they're opening in a 1,200 seater. And I said to him, you better get ready. Because God's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or ask. I don't care how you've been attacked. I don't care. I, I mean, I do care. You understand what I'm saying? You have to make up your mind to not look at what is natural that situation, your son has been like this now for four years. Your marriage has been like this for four years. Your business has been like this for four days or four years. And in your heart, you believe it's all over, just like Martha. Actually, when she comes to Jesus, she says, I I it's over. It's done. Lazarus cannot come forth. He said, did I not tell you? Because my brother and my sister, you cannot stay in that place of cynicism. Because there's no miracle manifest in your life. You have to activate yourself beyond your disillusionment and disappointment. And you have to allow Jesus to take His place in your life. As your deliverer, as your healer, as your savior. In your lowest moments, that's when you have to make your way to Him. Your Savior. Think about this. I mean, Lazarus is sick. Martha and Mary sends and gets Jesus' attention and says, The one you love, I'm going to talk about it tonight. God loves you. When you pray, God hears you. I think we have this picture of God as this religious God. No, He's our Father. We spoke about it recently. He's a God who cares about you. Jesus wept over Lazarus because He loved him. He was concerned about Martha and Mary. He loved them enough to come to them. He delayed His coming because the Jews believed for three days the Spirit still hovered around the body and the silver cord had not yet been detached. So there was a reason why Jesus waited four days. And sometimes there's a reason why God waits to deliver you in His time. It's not your time, but it will be God's time. And it will be for the glory of God. I said your deliverance will be for the glory of God. I don't care what people think. People may write you off. You may be in a grave suit already. You may feel that every door is closed. But my Bible says God opens the door that no man can shut. 
My Bible says God makes a way where there seems to be no way. My Bible says that God is the resurrection and the life. That's why you are not going to resign yourself to a place of defeat. You are not going to camp at your grave and put your roses on that grave. No, you're going to stand at your grave and you are going to give God the praise and you're going to give God the glory and you are going to see God is going to give you uh, 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 beautiful ashes because the Bible says weeping endures for a moment but joy comes in the morning. Give somebody a high five and say joy comes in the morning. Say it. You say what's up with everybody standing up? Because if we don't stand up here, we're not going to stand up out there. So I cannot preach with low energy because I have to lift you up. I have to boost you, lift you. Some of you don't like it, but I've got to do it. I've got to lift you up. Hey, you've been in the grave too long. You've been standing at that funeral parlor too long. You've been weeping and mourning too long about what could have been and what could have seen. What should have been, I'm telling you today. Jesus said, Martha, Martha, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God. But pastor, I've gone for seven operations. I don't care if you have to go for 11 operations. You keep on believing when you go to the doctor because your miracle will come. I said your miracle will come. I said your breakthrough will come. Miracle. Of, oh, I'm ready for another miracle. Miracle after miracle. Another one is on the way. Say amen. Come on. Somebody just give the Lord a praise. Just shift yourself on the inside this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost. I always feel the Holy Ghost, okay? But you know what I'm saying? I'm a Pentecostal. You say, Pastor, I feel nothing. That's okay. I feel hot. So, John, and this is the key this morning. In John 11, 21, 22, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if, you've be, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Oh my word, you think I haven't had those thoughts? When my brother died of cancer and everybody, was, everybody prayed for him, you think I'm one of those people that lured my head in the clouds? But we prayed, we walked with God, we believed God, we fought. You went to every doctor, that's why I celebrate doctors. Because it's one of the most noble professions in this world. I believe it. I do. But there are certain things doctors cannot do. And we had all Christian doctors work with him. And as a matter of fact, when he went for his um, uh, CT scan and, and MRI, the, the surgeon who I know was at school with me, my brother didn't hear, he told me, he's got three months to live. That's it. He didn't hear it. I never told him. And we fought 20 months. And we saw God sustain him. And we saw a lot of good things come out of it. Even though you think good things only come out of good situations. Sometimes good things come out of bad situations. Sometimes good things come out of hurtful situations. Sometimes, and I'll tell you, I've seen, I've seen how God works in the lowest moments of your life. If you will not stay down on the ground, but if like a Job, you will say, God, this is not final. You have another miracle. There's another miracle. And I see that miracle in his sons. I see that miracle in other people. I see that his legacy continues. I tell you, the devil never has the final say. He can snatch somebody's life away. But them children are going to serve the Lord. You may lose this business, but you're going to go dig another well. And God is going to bless that business. Just don't stay in the place of cynicism and skepticism and say, God, you could have stopped it. We know God can prevent anything. Why doesn't he? I don't know and neither do you. But the issue is this morning, you have to keep on believing. You have to keep on praising God. You have to become more determined. And if the devil hits you, you hit him harder. You hit him where it matters. You go get people saved. You go lay hands on the sick. I tell you, I lay hands on more sick people now than I did before my brother died. And I've seen God do many miracles. And I prayed for some and they died. You say, Pastor, that's not good. I said, no, you have to see the purpose of God and what's happening. We have to get your family saved, your family on fire for God. We have to believe that there are miracles even after your natural life yet today. Are you listening to me, Jesus? Name? So what am I saying? That maybe you lost that business, but you can start another business. You are not defined by 
the grave. You are defined by the grave. The tomb of Jesus Christ that is empty. Can you say amen? So not everything is going to turn out the way you think. But if you become too intellectual and question God too much, like Martha, you can stop God from moving in your life. That's why Jesus tells her twice. Because you're all intelligent people. God made you that way. Some of you more analytical. And you always analyze everything. Careful. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. With God, one plus one doesn't make two. One puts a thousand to flight and two ten thousand. God is a God of miracle. He can put His hand upon your business and accelerate things tomorrow. He can cause the stone to be rolled away tomorrow. He can cause things to be different tomorrow. He can cause those chains to fall off your child tomorrow. That's the God we serve. Because He says, it's a statement. It's not a suggestion. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. That means anything that is dead, anything that is dry, that is touched by God, has the potential to be resurrected and to come back to life. Oh, shout amen, somebody in Jesus' name. So your situation is not too hopeless, not too difficult for God. Even when hope seems lost and your victory, your faith seems weak, you have to believe. You say, Pastor, I cannot. It's not an option. When Jairus' little girl was at the point of death, and he said to Jesus, come lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus went with him. I spoke about the woman with the issue of blood that took his attention. And remember, Jairus is standing there. Then people come to him. And they say, trouble the master no more. Your little girl died. What did Jesus do? As soon as he heard the word, he said what? Fear not. Only believe. Family, it's critical that we keep our belief in God. It's critical when the storms of life come that we sip our lips. You come home and it's been a tough day at the office. And I know... The women work as hard as the men in South Africa, and your spouse, let me say it that way, says, how was your day? Listen, it's, if it was a bad day, say, it was one of those days, but don't go into specific specifics. <laughs> we need to know one another well, that we don't go take that funeral to the home. When you go home and you say, um, it's, been, it's been one of those days, but I know that God is faithful. Maybe you lost a client, maybe you lost a business. Things happen that we have no control over. Don't go voice it. Fear not, only believe. Fear not, Jairus, only believe. Believe that God is able. It's a choice. In Mark eleven twenty two, Jesus says, have faith in God. In Mark nine twenty three, he says, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. I didn't write the Bible, but I will preach it accurately and without apology. I'm not going to uh, water the Bible down because of people that are cynical towards God in this modern day and age. Our God is still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Our God is still Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is present. Our God is still a mighty deliverer. Our God's hand is not too short to deliver. He's not just the God of yesterday, He's the God of today and the God of tomorrow. Say Amen. So I'm telling you today, there's a miracle for you. There's a miracle for you. There's a breakthrough for you. There's an open door for you. There's a restoration for you. You keep on praying and praying and praying and believing God in Jesus' name. But if you're not in a place of belief, your prayers will not work. So twice Jesus tells Martha, twice. Believe. Then he says, when she makes a negative statement, why did this happen, Lord? He corrects her. He says, did I not tell you if you would believe? You would see the glory of God. I know the things we face sometimes are so real that we want to believe them. Well, let's talk about Lazarus. That's real. He's dead. He's stinking. It's a hopeless situation. Yet Jesus tells her to believe because without believing you will not see the glory of God 
and we know what the glory of God is. Let's not make it this spiritual, mystical thing. The glory of God is a manifestation of God's goodness in your life. Like David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So when we talk about the glory of God, it's not a cloud. It is a manifestation of God's goodness in your life, your valley, your prison, your situation that you are facing right now. I'm asking you one thing today, and that is the thing Jesus asked Martha to believe. Because your belief is the ignition switch that gets you off the launching pad. Your belief is either going to propel you into your future or will keep you from the future God has for you. You cannot be neutral. You cannot make this walk with God just, Kay Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. You can't do it. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I never wrote that. That's the Bible. He that comes to God cannot come to God in neutral. He that comes to God must come in faith, believing that God is a rewarder. So you, you cannot believe something and say the opposite. That's not faith. Amen. So sometimes people give us advice and you're believing and those voices begin to neutralize your faith. And everybody tells you it's not going to work and your accountant sits with you and shows you that your numbers are down. Well, listen, we work with budgets as well. We um, also have to plan wisely. And I look at the natural things and I immediately make a faith statement and say, God will supply all my need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If things are decreasing, I say, uh, things are not going to decrease because I don't serve a God of decrease. I serve a God of increase. I say it right there and then. Our auditors know. They're not in our church. Our financial department knows. The people that work with the finances, they walk in and then they know already. They're not sheepish, but they know already. They have to present the facts. I say, okay, I see it. Don't say it. I see I got eyes. Me can read a budget. I can see it. It's enough for me. Now let me tell you, you agree with me because the Bible says whatever two or three things we will agree on as touching anything, our Father in heaven shall be done. And I've taught them to write over that budget, my God shall supply all of our need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Increase, increase, multiplication in Jesus' name. I say it in the name of Jesus. I speak my faith, not my reality. We read that. The first scripture was, God gives life to the dead. How? Calling things that be not as though they were. Not calling things that are as though it is. So you lose a child. I, one of my kids went through this. And it's traumatic. It's emotional. I say, my girl, I understand. Let's weep. Put your head on my shoulder and I'll weep with you. But then... Make a decision. That is a God of restoration. That what the devil stole, God will give back to you. You may have had three miscarriages. Listen, you're going to have a baby. God's going to bless you, lady. God's going to bless you. You will not live in a place of shame. God is going to bless you. God will bless the fruit of your womb. Are you listening to me? You've been struggling with an issue of blood. You don't be overwhelmed by your situation. You make your way to Jesus and you believe. Anything is possible, Jesus said to those who can believe. Listen what he says in the Passion Translation after Martha says this to him. Jesus looked at her and said, Didn't I tell you that if you will believe in me, you will see God unveil His power? I believe God's ready to do great things in our lives. I really do. I do. It's not emotion. That's... Maybe I should shout louder than anybody else in the world are shouting because everything out there is negative. Everything there is designed to steal your faith. And when you look at your circumstances as well, they are real, right? But then Abraham, the Bible says, he looked not at his own body dead. In Romans chapter 4 verse 18. Who contrary to hope in hope believed. No hope. Yet Abraham believes in hope. So that he would become the father of many nations. Put the scripture up. Romans 8 verse 4, 18. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. 
And not being weak in faith, Romans 8, it's in the sermon, thank you, verse 18 to 21. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about 100 years old. Now, uh, uh, um, I know we said there's a lot of doctors here, well, we're waiting for the scripture. Um, what's the oldest lady that you've had have a baby? Shout it. Yes. 47. That's Okay. Now the doctors look at me like this. 47, that's not too bad. We had a baby over 50 here today. Anybody over 50 had a baby? Okay, so obviously 50 years old are not having babies. How many of you over 60 had a baby? 70? 80? 90? I'm looking for my scripture. 90. 90 old mama, pregnant. Any doctor will tell you there is no hope in the natural for a 90 year old woman to fall pregnant. But God gave Abram a promise 25 years before that. Then Sarah was already beyond the age of childbearing. She's 65 years old when the promise comes. He says, from Sarah, that lady with a dead womb, because I'm the God who gives life to dead things, Abram. He considered not his own body. His own reproductive system wasn't operating. He wasn't able to father children. But after this, he fathers many other children. Listen, when God's Spirit hits you, when the power of God comes into your life, dead things are going to come alive in every area. What was barren will produce fruit. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Shout amen. Come on. Every area of your life will thrive and you will experience the blessing of God if you will believe in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So the Bible says in verse 19, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. Anybody almost 100 years old yet today? Okay. Okay. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver, listen, stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Being fully convinced, fully persuaded. No double-mindedness. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Thank you for being with us on television today. The one Jesus loved was in a crisis and Jesus made his way to him to resurrect him you are the one he loves the one he cares about make your way to Jesus you are going to find a willing savior ready to hear you and help you in Jesus name God bless you amen come on give them a God bless you So he did not waver the promise of God. It wasn't double-minded. James is very clear. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man suppose he will receive anything of the Lord. That's why you cannot do this following Jesus part-time. It's a 24-7, seven, seven day a week. Every word you speak impacts your life. The things you believe. I said to someone recently, because the person is disciplined in confession and then a crisis hit the person and suddenly the person said everything opposite to what they were confessing. I said, careful, because pressure forces faith into the open. So when, when, when the pressure is on, that's what the Bible says, count it all joy when you go through various trials, tests, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. So when pressure comes, what you truly believe comes to the surface. We have to be um, prayerful. Like David who says, put a watch at the door of my lips. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Because you are snared, Proverbs 6 verse 2, by the words of your mouth. Proverbs 18 21, death and life, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Psalm 45 verse 1, your tongue is there's the hand of a ready writer. James chapter 2, you steer your life the course of your life through the words that come out of your mouth? Yes. You can't be married and wonder you, 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 you're mad with your husband. You say, I never should have married you. What do you mean, girl? Where did that come from? 
Huh? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Under pressure. I mean, my parrot can say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I mean, I bought a parrot, okay? But I didn't uh, teach the parrot a certain word. And it's a pastor's parrot, a big macaw. And uh, the young guy that gave the parrot to me, um, every time the parrot made a, he said something. Then that parrot, he sits in my house, then people visit, and I say, I say, I bind you in Jesus' name, I bind you. So I tried, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I could never get the out. It was always, so I said, no, I'm getting rid of you, you ugly thing. And she actually wasn't. She was beautiful. I called her Shalom. Calm her down, etc. It didn't work. Because Shalom made up her mind. When the pressure was on. Yeah. Make her think of somebody you know. Uh, let's not even talk about the traffic, okay? Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Till you drive in your car. And help us on our motorbikes, because I tell you one thing. I need to be saved every day with people when I'm on a motorbike, okay? Especially the ladies that we love so much with cell phones and doing makeup at the same time. That's not the time to multitask. Please. Fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. I know it's simple, this message, but it really is not. Because we operate from a place of belief, positive or negative. If you believe you can, you probably will. If you believe you can't, you most assuredly won't. Because your belief is what gets you off the launching pad. What you truly believe. Not what you say you believe, what you truly believe. That's why the word is so important. Time in the word and rewriting the treasure within. So that when the pressure comes, your faith is forced into the open. Not your fear, your anger, your resentment, but your faith. So you're praying for that son's salvation. Don't cancel your faith by the words when you lose your, 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 your uh, sanity or whatever you do. Whatever people lose, I don't know. But suddenly they just say anything and they say, okay, I had a bad moment. Careful for those bad moments. Careful when your emotions take over. Careful, careful, careful. Those emotions are part of you and you are meant to control your own emotions. Now understand, people today have every kind of a challenge emotionally and mental health is the greatest challenge of our day possibly. And I have sympathy for people that go through these things. But still, even then... You must control your tongue. If you feel bad, go. Mm, but don't say anything. Don't. Bible says, he that opens wide his mouth will have destruction. You have to say what you believe. But you're not going to say what you believe until you build a treasure of belief. And that's only possible through time in the Word. Spending time in the Word of God. Reading your Bible. Confessing the Bible. Meditating on the Bible. Till God's thoughts become your thoughts. And the words of God become your words. His Word has to become your treasure. Because the challenges will come. The disappointments will come. And the conversation here for Martha is to keep her in a place of belief. Everything she says in the natural is right. Jesus could have prevented it. Yes, he's a miracle worker. If he came sooner, Lazarus wouldn't have died. Yes. Lazarus is behind a stone. Yes. Lazarus is stinking already. Yes. But he never entertained one natural truth. He kept her focused on God. He kept her focused on who he was. The resurrection and the life. And I tell you, my dear friend, He still is. The resurrection and the life. And I'll close with this because I have to go to Johannesburg. That Martha, Martha, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God. Whatever your name is, I say to you today, 
If you will believe, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. I don't know when. Maybe it's this month, next month, next year. I don't know, but your son will come back to Christ. Uh, your business will be revived. Your breakthrough will come. Your deliverance will come. You, you will see a manifestation of God. God will sustain you through the valley. You go for that operation. And in the natural, you should be dead. I'll tell you, God's going to sustain you. God's going to carry you. The fire will not have the final say. The lion will not have the final say. God will have the final say. You are not done. God is not finished with you. You are the one that Jesus loves. Hear me this morning. You, Lazarus, are the one that Jesus loves. He cares about you. He's not going to pass you by. He's not going to abandon you. And he said, she said, smart woman, she said, I know even now, whatever you ask the Father, He will give you. Listen, Jesus is praying for yourself. Why don't you start praying for yourself? Jesus believes in what can happen. Why don't you begin to believe in the name of Jesus? Come on, Martha. Martha, Martha. Your situation is not hopeless. Martha, Martha, believe God. He is the resurrection and the life if you believe it today come on just stand i know you are facing things some of you for years abraham 25 years he was believing god for his breakthrough sometimes things take a little bit longer but abraham never gave up abraham never dwelt in a place of hopelessness against hope in hope he believed i want to encourage you to do the same you keep on keeping on god will not fail you because he loves you he loves you he loves you in Jesus name come on I know you need God to do something in your life this morning it may be in a child it may be in your mind it may be a private battle I don't know maybe you are bound in an area maybe there's a stone that has to be rolled away today listen he's here he's here his power is available and he loves you today don't stay neutral in the presence of a savior that is risen that defeated the devil's sin and sickness and disease you Put your faith in God today that things are going to be different. Things are going to be better. Miracle after miracle in the name of Jesus. Say amen. Come on. God loves you. He loves you. up your hands in the name of Jesus don't change the tune don't change the tune please the great I am is here 
the great I am. The great commander. The one who came and redeemed us. Reconcile us to himself. To restore his glory through us. The very same God that died for us on the cross is here. Because he says whenever two or three come together in my name, he says I'm going to be there in the midst of them. Those who came together and they, they reference me, they talk to one another, he said I'm going to be there in the midst of them. The Bible says I will pay attention and I'll be in the meeting. And the names of every man, every woman that was in the meeting will be recorded. Then he says when I act, I will remember them as my special children. That God I'm talking about is here. Then he says, up until you open up your mouth. Because you see a closed mouth, a closed destiny. He himself, God has shown us his character. Shown us his character. He has revealed his character through his word. Because he says in blessing, I will bless you in multiplication. In multiplying, I will multiply you. If you're desperate and hungry enough and you call on my name, I will come. And I will show you certain things that no man will show you. This is an individual walk. You see, this morning God is calling you individually as a family. And he's here, he's embracing you. And he wants to show his glory through you. Up until then, some of us will go through the same mountain again and again and again and again. And the very same God that says, when you call, I will answer. And I'll even show you wonderful and mighty things that we don't know. Because you see, up until you can open up your heart and God becomes your Lord, your Christ, your Messiah. And he, you become about the will and the purpose and the mandate that God has mandated to and commissioned you to do up until you can, you can become responsible for that call. There are too many things in your life you'll not be able to do. Because the Bible says there's a spirit within man. The Bible says the breath of God Almighty. The breath of God Almighty. The spirit that will give you understanding and will give you intelligence. That spirit, this is what I'm talking about. You see, when you believe and, you, and, you, and, you, and you, you become responsible to the call of God, when he calls you and he becomes your Lord and your Savior. My family don't have to go around the mountain again and again. Because when he started the cross and you give your life to the Lord and you, you surrender your entire life to him, and you, 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 you say, God, I want to be responsible. God, I want to witness for you. But God, I want to start at the cross where you have beaten beyond recognition for me. I want my life to belong to you. I want everything that is in me belong to you. When that happens, God will take you. He will mold you. He will take you with his hand. He will maneuver you. He will navigate with you through the tough times. When the storm shows up, God will always be there. Many people, they want the goodness and the mercy of God. But they don't want to respond to him. Many people are looking for the great commander, God himself, to lead them. But they don't want to give him his rightful place in their life. They don't want to surrender everything. You see, sometimes people are going through some stuff in their life. Over and over. Maybe it's in a situation. Maybe it's something in your life that you're going it over and over. It's because sometimes it's, a, it's just a sign of obedience that will change your situation forever. Because you see when the call is made to surrender, when the call has been made to come to the altar and surrender your life, recommit your life, surrender to the altar. And so God, I will witness for you because this is the command, the mission you've given to me. I life, my wife and, and my children because this is the command you've given to me. When that happens, it becomes a life of obedience. Because you see, obedience will bring certain things in life that you don't even know. Because obedience brings response from God. Obedience is what will, will activate the supernatural blessing of God to activate in your life. Many people are praying. 
but they're not obedient. Many people are, are coming to church every single Sunday, but they're not obedient to what God has called them to be. You see, the Bible is full of promises and instruction, and God is commanding us. I don't want you to, to come and sacrifice your day, leave your house, and, and come to the church, and the meeting was prepared for you, and God is working in your heart, and you leave this place without surrendering to the will and the purpose of God in your life. Because you see, when you, when you come, and you don't. And you call on God on a Monday, on a Tuesday. When a situation arises, sometimes up until you can go back to the factory setting where it all begins. Because God is looking for one thing from you this morning to answer the call. Many people I know they hear, they've been doing this Christian thing, but they've never totally surrendered. They've never totally surrendered their, their will and their purpose to God. Because when you surrender everything to God, you become His disciples. His disciple. And you witness for Him. And you pray for the others because of Him. And you love others because He has commanded. And you worship because He has commanded you. But sometimes there are spaces and areas in our life where we've been lacking. In prayer we've lacked. In worship we've lacked. Witnessing we've lacked. Loving one another as Christ has commanded us we lack. Inviting and bringing the people to church we've lacked. And we come to church and worship the one that has commanded us. So this morning, I want you to surrender. In an area that you've not been faithful to God. And if you are here also, you've never given your life to the Lord. Maybe you did and something happened and it shook the life of God out of your life. I'm asking you, surrender. Once you believe, you'll see the glory of God. The manifesting power of the power of the Holy Spirit. You used to run for God, you're not running any longer. God is calling you because he has called each and every one of us this morning. As a family, individually, young and old, black, white, pink, maroon, whatever color, he has called us so that his glory can shine in us and through us. So that we can become responsible stewards in our life, in our worship, in our witnessing, in everything that God has commanded us to do. So I want every eye closed, every head bowed. I want to do a deep search in your life this morning. Deep search this morning and become truthful to yourself. Don't worry about the people in front of you on your left, on your right. This is about you. We don't want to do this church thing religiously. We don't. We don't. Because it says the whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. But for His glory to cover the entire world as the waters cover the sea, God meets in each and every one of us our total surrender to his will and to his purpose. But it starts tonight, this afternoon, this morning, by giving your life to the Lord and surrendering. If you fall in those, in one of those categories, I want you to raise up your hand right now in Jesus' name and say, Pastor, pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't leave this place. The way you came the past three, four, five years. Don't do it. Don't do it. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. Once you surrender and you become obedient, God will be able the last time in the balcony, if you did not raise up your hand right now, 
Raise up your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, family. Thank you. On this ramp, if you did not, I want you now to say, Father, here I am. I surrender all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Believers, come pray in the Holy Ghost. Because God is about to do something so super supernatural that nobody else has ever seen. On this ramp, if you want to surrender, recommit, give your life to the Lord for the greater purpose, I want you to raise up your hand very high. Say, Pastor, I'm coming back home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, family. Look at me. We are the only living stones that the people will see. You don't have to be in a meeting and introduce yourself and say, I'm born again, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Normally when the people do that, you raise eyebrows. Because how you speak, before the time, how you hug the people, how you honor them, how you speak to the people, it will show us you are, you are his ambassador. You are representing him. So the people will come, not because sometimes we speak to them. They will come because they've been watching you at your work. They've been watching you when you go out with your family. They've been watching you in the sports field. They've been watching you at the golf course. They've been watching you when you come to the church. They've been watching you when you leave this building. They've been watching you when you're in a, in a grocery, grocery store. That is what it's all about. Because you can't say something and your life say something else. What you say, it has to be the same thing as what your actions are. So if you raise your hand or you did not raise your hand, family, I want you to take everything that you brought to church. Your hand back, the stuff that you brought for water baptism, don't leave it there. Come with everything that you brought to church and meet us here at the altar. Where many lives have changed forever and ever. Come on, family. Let's encourage them. Come on. From the balcony, come. Come. Let's encourage them. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Don't leave this place the same. Don't leave this place the same. God is waiting for you at the altar. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, come on. You've already sacrificed living your house. You've already sacrificed by coming to church. You've already sacrificed by leaving your house. Sacrifice a minute of coming. Sacrifice a minute of coming in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, family. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Those who can. Oh, Ria Santa Baria Copresia. Imara Dushkala Rabba Centoriaka. God is going to do a new thing in your life. Come on, family. Come. Let them encourage them. Look to the person on the right, on the left, and say, my brother, my sister, I will go with you. You don't have to go back home the same way you came. Holy Ghost! Don't open doors. While the people are giving their life to the Lord, security, come on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, come on. Oh, Ria Rabba Santa Ria Oh, the spirit of the living God, God Almighty, come on. Come on, let's encourage them. Let them encourage them. Let them encourage them. He will not leave you the same UK. He will touch you forever. And he will change your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, come on, family. God is about to do something. God is about to change people's lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's clap, let's clap, let's clap, let's clap. People are coming, let's clap. Energy in the name of Jesus Christ, come on. Yes, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost.
Amen. Amen. Family, I want to look at the person on your right and your left and tell them, don't leave this place the same. Don't leave this place the same. Because you see, this is what we do. This is what we do. When you're desperate enough, because it's not going to help you. Sometimes people want to fast for 500 years. There's a party going on in heaven right now. There's a party going on in heaven right now. And I want you to believe if everything in your heart this morning, that it's the beginning of a new day. It's the beginning of a new day. Because you see, people sometimes they don't want to sacrifice for God. You need to move from there and walk down there and here and come here. It's a sacrifice. And God will meet you at your place of your sacrifice. Thank you for coming. I want you to put your hand in your heart and, and pray the following prayer with me. We were all there. Pastor Art was there, 18 years old. All of us, we were there. There were those that were desperately and seriously hungry, and there were those that were not, and they stayed in their seat. You look at their life now, where they at, some of them, they'll wish they could have made that decision. Say, Father, this morning, I want you to forgive all my wrongs in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, I give my life to you. I want you to become my Lord, my Savior. I believe with all my heart that you've died for me on the cross. This morning, I believe with all my heart that I'm forgiven and I'm washed by the blood of Jesus Christ in Jesus name amen. amen amen come on family this is why we do church so family we will pray with you at the chapel could you please go with pastor Elzan and then with pastor Elzan then they'll, when they finish praying with you they'll bring you right back into the service into the service again and then all the other churches CRC online, please go with the pastors. Come on, family, let's give them a round of applause as they go. This is why we do church, for people to give their life to the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. And amen. Family, we can take our seat as we watch this week's announcements. Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Martin Luther King Jr. Pastor Ad always reminds us that an uninvolved Christian never reaches spiritual maturity. We're called to meet the needs in our world and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. To be involved means doing more than the bare minimum. It means giving of yourself. When we do this, we model Jesus' actions and reflect his heart to our world. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. The revelation of God's love for us should propel us to love others. And as a church, we make plenty of avenues available for members and volunteers to be a part of the change we seek for our world. Let love be a real thing. These past few weeks, we had the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of thousands of people. In February, we had our clothing outreaches in Bloemfontein, Pretoria, and Johannesburg, where we gave out over 229 large black bags of clothes to over 600 people and also gave out over 300 cups of soup. In addition, 
we had an outreach at Lehigh High School in Bochabel, where we had over 1,000 learners in attendance. We handed out 90 pairs of brand new school shoes and ministered to them where multitudes gave their lives to Jesus. As children of the kingdom, Jesus gave us the keys, promising that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The fight for the souls of humanity rests on our shoulders, and God has anointed us to fulfill his assignment as his bride. A big thank you to all our givers who make these initiatives possible. Together, we stand as a mighty army of God that has a guaranteed victory in him. Thank you, and God bless. I wish I could tell you, wish I could describe it, but I can't contain it, can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to paint the whole picture, not enough words to ever say what I found. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious, if only He is merciful and powerful. Together worthy, who we talking about? That's my king. There's no one before you. Yes, we will adore you. All of this is for you. Who we talking about? That's my king. Jesus, you're my king. Yeah. I'm not letting the rhyme scrap without joining the chorus. There aren't enough notes to make a harmony It's the song of the angels Through all of the ages With all of the earth and every symphony Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy He is merciful and powerful Who we talking about? Let's find it We declare the glory all together worthy Who we talking about? That's my king There's no one before you Yes, we will adore you All of this is for you Who we talking about? That's my king That's my king Oh, is he your king this morning? That's my king That's my God that's my shepherd, my protector. That's my king. That's my rock. That's my anchor. My defender. That's my king. That's my God. That's my shepherd, my protector. That's my king. Together worthy, who we talking about? That's my king. We declare the glory. Give him all the honor. All together worthy, who we talking about? That's my king. There's no one before you. Hey, hey. who we talking about? That's my king. Hallelujah. Come on, amen, family. Let's give the band a hand. For the item this morning, just a quick announcement before we go, family. If you'd like to become a member of CRC, many of you have been coming for a while and you haven't officially become a member, please come on Tuesday night here in the chapel, 7 o'clock, and as well as next week, Sunday, immediately after the service, we'll have a new member's orientation as we close together. And before we close, family, sorry, the beautiful ashes, it's important that we can still donate. So if you haven't brought your things yet, Every Sunday you can bring, you can bring it in the week throughout the work hours. You can bring it to the church office as we close. Father, we thank you for the amazing word that was shared this morning. That come this week, we will see dead things come alive. 
that the people that we've been trusting you for, Father, we will see them come home, that they may return, Father. We thank you for wisdom and insight, that we will apply what we've learned this morning in the week and the months to come. And we will see our lives better off because of the principles we got taught this morning. We thank you for everyone that gave into the offering and every person that got saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Family, if you're going to get baptized today, please be so kind just to come.